Well, Marie, um, while you're setting up and figuring out the logistics of um, the kitchen setup, maybe I can just jump in real quick and um, talk about how a presentation like this could be you know, incorporated into anyone's curriculum, whether in a very formal way or in a um, quick way. And then Marie, um, when you get ready, just interrupt me and um, you can start with the guacamole preparation. Does that sound good? Okay, perfect. Okay, so... Um, well, I have um, incorporated food into my lessons really thanks to um, using the Nuestra Historia text. Um, I'm a Spanish teacher, as was mentioned, and um, if you use Nuestra Historia either um, in any of the languages, there's a food unit in level three, I know, because <laughs> I teach level three. And, um, you know, the stories are really fun. And uh, when I was approaching the assessment for that particular unit, I thought, gosh, it could be fun to just have students um, you know, make something for the class and we could kind of tie in different grammar structures. So I just wanted to throw in um, the chat, that project, the project guidelines for that. Um, let me put that here. So if you're able to um, view the chat, you can click on that link. And this project was called I Que Probarlo, You've Got to Try It, which is the name of um, the, the, ch the food chapter in the level three book. And uh, if you can't open it, I'll just explain. I said to the class, you know, pick a dish that you love to eat and make it for the class. Um, and I gave them the option. I gave them a lot of choice, which I think is a great thing to do. So I said, um, you can, you know, actually do a live demonstration in class, which is what Marie is going to kind of mimic for us. And I said, you know, in that case, pick something kind of low key because like most of us, we don't really have access to a, a kitchen, um, maybe a hot plate or something like that. And Marie might talk more about some of the tools you would want to invest in if you are going to incorporate cooking at any point in your class. But um, I gave the suggestions of a smoothie, a sandwich, a salad. And um, what ended up happening was I had a student make lemonade. So really simple ingredients, water, lemon, sugar. Um, another student prepared sushi, um, not raw fish, but um, like a vegetarian sushi. And then someone else did um, juice. So you could do things that aren't really that involved um, and, and can be done live, like what we're gonna see from Marie. There she goes, she's got it set up. So I might stop talking now. Um, Marie, is now a good time to sort of take over? Are you set up? Well, she's on mute. Maybe. There we go. I can see it. it. Okay. <laughs> Marie, do you have um your background filter on for that camera? It's a little, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a little looking like your bookcase. And a little bit looking like a mocajete. <laughs> Give her a second. She'll get it together. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, you know, Maria, if you saw the screen, um, she is going to be preparing guacamole, um, which is something that another colleague of mine um, has done. That's another one of those, like, cooking things that's pretty low-key. Um, so maybe if you feel inspired by this recipe, this is something you could do. But um, I think the live presentations are really fun. It's a nice change of pace for students. But um, I also give them, them the option that they could film it, but that they you'll see in the instructions if you clicked on it, they weren't allowed to do a voiceover. Because what I wanted to avoid was, you know, the students cooking it and then just reading a script. Um, I really wanted there to be um, practice that went into it. I wanted them to focus on their public speaking skills. That's something that I work on my students, um, work with my students on. And, um, you know, depending on what your language target is, in the Nuestra Historia books, um, the grammar, there's a grammar suggestion that's threaded throughout, but at least for the school that I'm teaching in, I have to teach more traditional things like commands, um, subjunctive with recommendations. And so if you also have to do something like that, you might see cooking lends itself to um, so many different types of, you know, grammar structures that you could do. And you'll see that in my instruction too. It's a, there's a bit more of a grammar focus um, than maybe some of us are used to due to um, the requirements of our schools. Marie, how are you doing? 
The camera looks good. I see the ingredients. Are you ready to start or should I take over? Oh, I think I maybe you are starting. You're just unmuted. There you go. Um, Maria, I'm not sure if you could hear me, but are you ready to start the cooking or do you want me to um, jump in again? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Just a little bit. I'm Make sure to speak loudly and clearly. Okay, yeah, this looks a little funky, but... <laughs> Okay, awesome. Um, so I have gathered all of our main ingredients here. Uh, we have our our avocado, our lime, a palm tomato, and a bunch of cilantro. I also have some spicy things. Um, And we are going to start by everything. Hey, Marie, uh, we're unable to really hear you clearly. Is this better? I don't know if you have a, a headset or something on. Mm -hmm. I can do the audio for my phone and the visual. Yeah, it sounds super muffled. Let's see. So while she's getting that set up again, I'll just jump in with, she was starting to show the ingredients. Um, and sometimes students can feel intimidated if they're really excited about a dish, but the vocab words that are part of the ingredients aren't ones they're familiar with. Um, one of the things that I suggest and that I put in that document as well is um, for the students to label any ingredients or tools that they're using with masking tape and a Sharpie, um, just so that they don't feel the pressure of, oh gosh, if I want to prepare, you know, my mom's special cookie recipe, I need to learn the word for, you know, butter and raspberries or whatever else it is. Um, and it can be nice too. Um, you saw that Marie had everything lined up and she was kind of holding each item up. At the start of the presentation in class, students get um, both the visual of the ingredient, but then they can see the text and the speaker, the, the student giving the presentation can see the, the text as well and kind of glance at it and not have the pressure of having everything memorized. So, um, I mean, it's hard to put tape on a tomato, but definitely for like knife and flour or, or whatever else. Um, I've seen students do it with like little place cards too. Um, and I think that's, you know, just another, another form of preparation um, where even though you're grading the speaking or assessing the speaking component, um, they still are engaging with written text as well. Okay, I'm hoping we finally have this set up together. <laughs> can you guys hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, and can you see as well? Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So we're just going to go ahead and start by cutting open our avocado, our lime, and then we're just going to mince our tomato and finally mince our cilantro and our jalapenos as well. Then we'll combine everything in the molente. So we're just gonna start by cutting everything up. I don't, I don't, want, I don't know if you wanna retake the floor while I just demonstrate. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I was saying that um, for these demonstrations, like one suggestion that I have is um, labeling vocabulary. And then, um, Melissa, I don't know if there's anything you want to say about um, other ways that you can engage with the vocabulary. Yes, definitely. So 
when I taught smoothie making, um, what was what I did in my classroom. And beforehand, we would talk about like things that you would put in the smoothies. Then I'd ask some questions beforehand. You know, do you like this? Do you or do you like that? And just get some like PQA kind of stuff going on. So like looking at the ingredients that Maria is using with her guacamole, we could ask like, do you like avocado? Is there anybody here that's never even tried avocado? Do you like avocado on your hamburgers? Do you like it on your pizza? And just throw some crazy things out there to let them hear that vocabulary over and over again and start thinking about it in a more personal way. So that would be something you do before the day that you're actually preparing it just to get them familiar with that vocabulary. You might show a video of somebody making avocado or um, guacamole and just describe what they're doing as almost like a, a movie talk kind of a thing, just narrating what's going on in that video. And then kind of like what Alan had said on the day of, before you even start preparing your food, you have it all lined up. The anticipation's there. They're so excited to start making it, but you don't let them start. And you're like, all right, show me the avocado. Show me the cilantro. And then like maybe do some like fast things, like say three things in sequence and have them do it and see if they can do it quickly. Things like that to just practice the vocabulary. And then um, I know Hannah um, was going to talk more about some of the structures that um, can be part of these presentations. So we heard Marie say mince and chop. Um, Hannah, do you want to jump in with any of that stuff? Um, first of all, can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes. I, I think I'm having the same audio problem I had yesterday. I'm just going to try and project and hope that that's fine. Um, so I see on your document, you have a, a list of verbs very similar to the ones that I was going to mention. And you already kind of talked about how the imperative is something that you might want to be teaching at the same time as your cooking lesson. Um, I have just a short list um, of verbs that relate to the guacamole that Marie is making. Um, so first, uh, the verb to cut in your tar target language. Um, so before you even start the lesson, you can do a little TPR practice with your students. So it's very easy to mime cut with your students. Maybe you'll do a little game of Simon Says beforehand. Um, and then I also picked to add. So she'll add the tomatoes, the jalapeno, get the cat out of here. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't know if it's still a meme with students, but I was thinking for to add, there's like a little arm gesture. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but there was a, a meme a while ago where this guy adds salt to his dish in this very funny arm gesture. So your students might have fun with that. <laughs> um, then there's also to mix. So to mash might not be a relevant uh, verb, but you can, uh, you can simplify it by mixing so you you know everyone knows what mix looks like and then two more verbs uh you every good chef um needs to taste their food as they eat it so i i might just say to taste very simply with tpr uh and then when you're finished with your guacamole you might want to share it with your friends and neighbors so I'm not exactly sure what a good one for to share would be, maybe to share, to share, perhaps. So you don't want to go overboard with all of the uh, vocabulary that you're going to introduce before the lesson, but just the basic one, I think. So that's that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes for these presentations that are really open-ended and where students have a lot of choice, there can be that, um, question of like, what do we, there's going to be so much different vocab with all these students choosing different things. Like how, how can I, um, you know, make it so that the students um, don't really go down the road of using lots of terms that no one understands, or how can I rein it in a little bit? And um, one way that I sort of address that is I say to students, like any word that you end up using as part of your presentation. So like guacamole, like Hannah said, is going to have mash in there, but you know, maybe a smoothie wouldn't. 
you really have to make an effort to teach your classmates and teach me the word. And so um, that's just like a standard that I have um, in my class. And so I say you can do it through TPR, like Hannah just mentioned. You could do it through a drawing. So if you were just on Eric's presentation, he talked so much about the value of drawing and doodling. Um, so sometimes I've had students in the middle of a presentation walk right over to the whiteboard and maybe they would draw the mashing. I mean, I guess probably drawing the mashing action is less effective than doing the mashing action. Um, but I think just encouraging your students themselves to offer comprehensible input um, when they're doing this type of presentation to others is really key. So yeah, um, either circumlocution, um, doing an action through TPR, or um, having a drawing is a nice way that you can kind of like rein in all the different vocab words that might come up um, in a situation like this. Marie, how are you doing? Do you wanna jump in with any more descriptions of what you're doing? Yeah, we're doing great. So we minced up all of our veggies, as you guys can see here, chopped up, diced up our tomatoes, our jalapenos, a little more fine. And then we have our cilantro minced right here. And we also cut our lime in half. So I pulled out the mojete and I put placed my avocados in here. And so right now we are going to go ahead and mash it. You can mash it to your preference. Preference. Some people like their avocado a little chunkier, some people a little bit smoother. It's completely up to you how you want to do that. And that might also be another um, vocab word to incorporate with the students in terms of like how um, chunky they want it or how smooth they want it. So adjectives like that. And then once we're done mashing up the avocado, we're gonna go ahead and add the ingredients that we just minced up and mix everything together. And it is that simple. <laughs> That's great. And something I liked about um, just listening to Marie explain how to do this, you may have just heard she said, what we're going to do is we're going to do this. She also said you can. Um, and so in Spanish, um, there's a construction with say, impersonal say or passive say that is used a lot with um, giving directions for how to do things like se necesita. Um, we need, one needs, it's needed. Um, so, you know, whether it's for like doing a food demonstration or something else, um, you know, that I think that particular construction um, fits really nicely into a project like this. That's something that I have to teach. It's a grammar point that in my curriculum I have to teach that's not necessarily a spot. Uh, it might be a spotlight. And I don't know, Hannah or Melissa, is that is that construction something that both say um, explicitly spotlights? Obviously, it's in a lot of the stories, but do you know if that's a grammar point in any of the um, Nuestra Historia texts? I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I yeah, can me do, neither. Let me do a check. <laughs> but but yeah, if you had to teach it like I do, um, I kind of like look to the food unit or look to um, explain how to do something because it just like step-by-step -step instructions that lends itself so nicely. Um, and as part of that, something that I know is definitely in the Nuestra series is the use of an accidental say. So like saying that um, like, oops, something fell or like, oops, I broke something is in the book. Um, and so I had my students when they did this project, they had to like stage an accident so like something had to drop or they had to like mess something up or forget something i and... actually just dropped the pit so that was perfect timing <laughs> yeah so i mean in in marie's case it happened naturally but um like in my class when there were live demonstrations they were kind of like you know when there's a bad infomercial and someone does a dramatization they were kind of like oh no i dropped the and you know that was just something like a little piece that everyone was looking for in everyone's presentation so um you know whether you're choosing to focus on like a very specific grammar structure through this or whether you're just enjoying the spirit of food or whether there's something like really little that you've brought up in your class. Like maybe if you're um, doing more of like a pop-up grammar thing or if a little construction um, has come up in your class, you know, like even rejoinders that you've been working for, like, mm, que rico, or, you know, that's, that's interesting. You could find ways to have students um, like, 
pop those up in these presentations. And I think students like seeing like, oh, how is that person going to do it? How is this going to fit in um, is another way that this can be fun. So before I add in my minced ingredients, we're going to go ahead and just season this up. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder, some black pepper, some ground onion, and just a little bit of sea salt to this. That looked like more than a little. <laughs> <laughs> I think the sprinkle looked more dramatic than <laughs> <it was. laughs> And we'll add those in and then just mix that up. And I'm also going to add in a little bit of crushed red pepper because I personally like it a little bit spicy. But again, that's completely optional. Just a little black pepper. And then we just want to make sure all of that is incorporated before we go ahead and add in our veggies and herbs. So mix would be another great verb to add to the vocab list as well. And now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and throw in our diced tomatoes, our jalapeno, and all of that fresh cilantro, which smells amazing. I wish you guys could smell it and taste it too, but... <laughs> okay, and then we'll just mix that around and combine everything, and we are done. Quick and easy. Yep, quick and easy, delicious, fresh, simple. Guacamole is definitely one of those things that seems more intimidating than it is, but it's definitely worth the effort to make it fresh at home. Melissa and Hannah, um, do you want to add anything else? Um, any observations or um, jump in right now? Um, I just wanted to ask the um, chat everyone here if they had any, so guacamole is one example that is really easy to do in the classroom in front of your students, um, either if you guys have any ideas about what would be easy and simple to do with your students or something that you've already done in the past, what kinds of uh, things might you do in the classroom, give us some recipe ideas. Yeah, I see a lot of um, ideas coming up on the chat, which is great. Oh, so we have fruit salad, crisps, ratatouille, which could be fun to do with the movie. And I also wanted to mention, in addition to, so we have the mocajete today as a part, to add a bit of culture into our food lesson, um, I did put together a short list of other kind of authentic cooking utensils that students might not be familiar with in their own kitchen. Um, so first you might decide to make a yerba mate in your class, they might not Maybe they won't enjoy tea, some students don't, but if you could get the gourd and the traditional um, bombillo. Um, we've got uh, tortilla might be a little bit difficult, but you could show off. Maybe if you've got a tortilla press at home, you might not do it in the classroom, but certainly that's something students might, might not be familiar with. Um, and then for uh, French teachers, uh, the crepe pan, which is much thinner than a, a traditional frying pan, or um, you could have a raclette party with your students, and that should be fun. All right, well, if that is all, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, a quick reminder. All of the sessions throughout the past three days were recorded and will be in our conference library. Um, and by the end of the day tomorrow, if you attended a session, you should receive a professional development certificate. Um, I'm gonna drop the link to the conference library in the chat, just so you have it handy. 
Um, Neil has been really good about uploading these, so you'll be able to see today's most likely by, oh, well, Neil's off on Friday, so maybe by Monday. <laughs> Uh, but thanks again, uh, everybody, for joining us. Thank you.